Hi everyone, I'm Nathan with TheEbookReader.com. For this video, I'm going to give you guys a review of the Kobo uh, Touch 2.0. This is Kobo's latest entry-level ebook reader, sub $100 ebook reader. Um, it's very similar to the uh, Kobo Glow HD that they just released uh, a little few months ago. It's uh, got the exact same design. I mean, the casing is identical down to the very millimeter. The size is the exact same, casing is the exact same. Uh, one difference is the back of the Glow HD has this sort of a, a textured pattern to it, whereas the um, Touch 2.0 just has sort of a plastic back to it, doesn't have any sort of uh, grippy part to it, even though it is textured. Uh, it doesn't have that rubbery feel to it like a lot of the e-readers do. Um, so uh, other than that, uh, they're very similar. The, the screen is the main difference. The, the Glow 2. Point, or the Glow HD it has a front light and it has the 300 pixel per inch uh, ink screen. So this one it has the old school 800 by uh, 600 resolution ink screen. So uh, text isn't as sharp and as clear as it is on the higher res screen. And you also don't have a front light. So unless you have a lamp like I do on it right now. So this is just regular, um, just the room right now without a uh, light on. So um, you do have uh, more contrast uh, when you have the front light on than you do with these non front lady readers. So uh, for comparison purposes, here's the uh, Glow HD uh, with the front light on. As you can see, it looks a lot different than uh, non front light e readers. Makes the background uh, lighter, so it kind of gives it uh, the appearance of more of a paper-like look, uh, a little bit more contrast than with the uh, regular e ink without a front light. So the Kobo Touch 2.0, it's a lot like the original Kobo Touch, actually. I mean, the screen is still identical. Uh, I still happen to have the old original Kobo Touch right here. So we got a new design, as you can see. Uh, the main thing that separated the uh, old school Kobo Touch is it had that home button right there. Uh, but as, like I said, the screens are identical. Uh, when you get them out in the sunlight, uh, the newer one definitely does look a bit better, though. The background seems a little bit lighter. I don't know if just because this one's like four years old or what. But um, other, the other only other difference, really, is that the old one had a micro SD card slot and the new one does not, so Kobo's moving away from the memory card slots, but they did double the store space from two, two gigabytes to four gigabytes. Uh, then other than that, like I said, they're very, it's very similar to the original, just has a new design, and the screen is still the same. So uh, as far as Kobo e-readers go, they all have the same software, so you're not gonna really get any different features uh, from different devices other than just like subtle things for like turning the front light on. And um, like the other ones, they have some games. For whatever reason, Kobo seems to be moving away from that. This uh, like Glow HD and this uh, Touch 2.0 don't have any games in there. They just have the uh, web browser in the experimental section. So uh, this is the home screen. Kobo's, Kobo's devices have this home screen layout like this. Um, and then you can go and view your library in a separate section. There's different sections. So like articles from Pocket is like you can have a web article sent to the device. Uh, and then you also have different sections for like your uh, previews. And you can set up collections if you wanted to use collections to organize your content. So. There's some different ways to organize your library as well. So from the library view, you got the sort by recent, the usual sort by, and you also got uh, file type and size if you got uh, some other kind of books on here. Because uh, mostly this is an EPUB e-reader and it supports Adobe DRM um, and it supports Kobo's EPUB uh, as it says right here. And it also supports uh, like PDF and a couple other formats. Uh, but uh, mostly it's an EPUB e-reader. And then you've also got these other sorting options over here as well and then you've got a couple of different options here for like library settings and you can uh, just go to cover view if you want and instead of the list view I kind of like the list view though it gives you some additional details about the book and then if you hold down on something you even get more uh, options here you can view the details of the book or the annotations that you've added it'll just jump to your annotations list immediately from there so it's kind of a quick way to access that stuff and then from up here you got your settings menu and then it tells you your battery percentage. You can hit the help articles, um, sync, set up Wi-Fi from here and do searches. And then in the advanced settings menu we've got some other stuff on here. I'm not going to go into a lot of this stuff. It's just some basic settings, you know. Uh, you can set the, the refresh frequency, how often the full page will flash when you're turning pages. Um, you can also set some custom tap zones. Um, one thing that I don't have uh, enabled yet one cool thing about Kobo's e-readers is you can install different patches. So like on the Glow HD right here, I have this different setting uh, installed here, but I haven't installed it on the uh, Touch 2.0 yet, where you can turn off, turn on and off the header and footer. So uh, that's something that uh, I'll probably be adding to the Touch eventually. You just have to add a file to your device, and uh, it's pretty easy to do. So you can get rid of the header and footer, as you can see on this page, no header, no footer. Um, by default, these Kobo devices, they do have the header and footer and it does take up quite a bit of space. So some people like myself, I really don't like 
the uh, waist is spaced down there. Uh, it's like an inch down here and three quarters of an inch up there. So if you really don't like that, you can get rid of it with that patch. Uh, you can find that at Mobile Read, and I also have it on my website as well. So when you're talking about reading ebooks on here, um, we've had some different options as far as settings go. You can adjust the font sizes, of course. It's one of the main things that separates uh, Kobo's devices from other devices is the fact that you can come in here and you can customize the weight so you can make the text darker. It does get a bit rougher when you get it darker though, so it's just sort of, you gotta fine tune it exactly how you like it. But that's a, that's a cool feature to have because like on the Kindles, you don't get the boldness options at all. You just have what Amazon gives you. So you got some uh, additional features in here as far as that goes. And you have more font sizes and uh, margin settings than like on Kindles. So you get some advanced settings. And you can also go with the uh, left justified if you don't like the weird spacing. So. Uh, that's another uh, unique feature with Kobo's versus Kindle's is you can go ahead and have more control over your layout if you want the uh, jagged right instead of you know the uh, fully justified. So there's uh, 10 preloaded fonts on here. You can also use Publisher's default. Um, you can let, load in your own OTF and TTF fonts in here and use those as well so you can customize your fonts even more. That's one of the main advantages with Kobo's over some of the other devices. And then we've also got an estimated reading timer down here. Um, this is like a little related thing right here. It used to give like additional info about books, but they uh, kind of discontinued that. Now it just gives uh, similar titles, related reading titles with that little icon right there. Uh, that's not going to be available in like EPUBs. It's like a Kobo EPUB thing. Same with these reading stats. These aren't available in sideloaded EPUBs. Uh, that's just like a Kobo format deal. So if you're not uh, using Kobo ebooks, you're not going to have that option. So we can navigate some different ways here. You can uh, there's the page button right there. The double one jumps by chapters. We've got the table of contents as well. You can just jump through the book that way, and you can jump back to your previous locations by hitting down there. Let's go ahead and highlight a word. So that will pop up the dictionary window, and then from there you can switch to these other translations, dictionaries and whatnot. But um, the one thing I, I, you will notice on this device I hadn't talked about is uh, the fonts, like even in the setting menu, in the, like, the uh, dialogues here and the settings menu, they render a bit darker and bolder than they do on the uh, Glow HD here with the 300 pixel per inch screen. Things are sharper and finer on this screen and they've compensated a bit with the lower resolution on the glow here or on the touch too here it's just the fonts a little bit darker you can notice a lot here on the home screen these are darker than they are on the um, glow hd which has the high res screen so everything's a bit sharper so they've kind of compensated for that a bit as you can tell um, with the uh, system fonts and even just like the library links at the bottom quite a bit bigger and bolder on the um, lower resolution screen of the touch 2.0 here all right, so some of the other things, of course, you can do the uh, pull and drag to add highlights. You can also share this stuff like on, on Facebook here. Uh, and if we wanted to run a search, so let's just highlight one word and then run a search. You can run a search on Google, Wikipedia, and just in the book as well. So let's pop up some uh, the search in the book, and it'll show how these uh, searches work in the book here. You got this list. You can scroll through shows you how many results. It does limit the results to 100 as you can see down here. You can just uh, scroll through the results that way and then exit back out of there. So of course like all Kobo e-readers you got the built-in bookstore here. Um, you can just go ahead and search for books directly or shop for books directly on the device uh, over Wi-Fi, download books directly. Uh, so obviously that's for Kobo's e-book store. So this device supports Adobe DRM uh, but you're going to have to use a computer and sideload ebooks when you're using Adobe DRM. Uh, same with like library ebooks, you got to you know use a computer, use ADE, transfer everything to that. So it is a bit of a hassle. But you can actually use the web browser to download like DRM free ebooks. If you wanted to go to like uh, Feedbooks or Project Gutenberg or something, you can go into the beta features and use the web browser to download uh, basic ebooks or EPUB ebooks. It's not going to work for any other kind of files, but you can download some ebooks using this. So Kobo's uh, home screen lays out with the uh, recent activity. So like we just were in the web browser, we got the web browser link right there. It'll have the recommended tiles here and anytime you want to get rid of some of this stuff you can just dismiss the tile 
and we'll replace it with something else. So it's kind of a unique home screen layout compared to other devices. It's sort of active to whatever you're doing last and it will add new stuff to based on that. And like I said, you can just get rid of everything like dismissing the titles if you don't want those recommended. And then we'll uh, cycle through your recently read books instead. There are also some extras, some reading stats as I showed earlier in the reading awards. Uh, I'm not going to get a whole lot into a whole lot of details with that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually wrap up this review right here. It's getting pretty long already. Uh, check out the ebookreader.com for some additional information. I'll have a full written review posted. And I'll also be doing some comparisons like with the Glow HD here and probably uh, the new Kindle, basic Kindle when it gets uh, released. So right now this compares very similarly to the entry level Kindle, the $79 one. Uh, this device is about $89 when you uh, order it from Canada to the U.S. though it's cheaper for the uh, from the exchange rate. But uh, I got it from Canada for about $80. Bucks, so it's that's basically the exact same price you know, as the entry level Kindle. So I do like this one uh, over the Kindle. The design's a lot nicer. It does have that plastic exterior, but it feels more solid. It's not as cheap feeling as the entry level Kindle. I never really cared for its design, but obviously it's a whole different ecosystem. And I think Amazon will probably be releasing a, a newer version here soon anyway. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. You guys have a good day and thank you for watching.